Let's begin with Turn A Gundam's abilities. Turn A Gundam's primary fire is Beam Rifle, a highly accurate beam weapon with minimal recoil and some accuracy loss. This weapon fires a shot every 0.5 seconds, does 125 to 55 damage depending on range, and uses 1 ammo per shot. Hold secondary fire to charge up the weapon, increasing its damage and turning it into a rapid projectile. Charge shots take 2 shots of ammunition, but do 330 damage at max charge, or 660 if they headshot. Charge shots have no fall off damage, pierce so they can hit multiple enemies, and can score headshots for double damage. Beam enemies down at range with charged attacks, and fend off close range targets with regular shots. Turn A Gundam's F ability is Overhead Throw. Grapple an enemy and throw them to damage and stun them. This 9 second cooldown initiates a small dash that ends with a long grab animation. If an enemy is caught in this animation, it breaks through any enemy shields, deals 400 damage, and then throws them behind you to stun them. Grab enemies that aggressively push onto you, but be careful not to miss, as missing locks you into a long animation where you are completely vulnerable. Turn A Gundam's E ability is Nano Skin. Repair your suit for a short time to recover lost hit points. Nano Skin recovers 100 HP per second for a total of 500, and when activated, it cannot be destroyed or cancelled. Save Nano Skin to survive when most threatened, but be careful not to waste it, as it is a long 25 second cooldown. Turn A Gundam's left shift ability is Thruster Gauge, a two section mobility bar. It can be used slowly to sprint or to hover in mid-air, or each bar can be fully spinned as a short-range dash. Use it to safely play in separated positions called off-angles, and to return quickly from spawn after death. Turn A Gundam's G maneuver is Moonlight Butterfly. Rise into the air and fly forward for a short time, damaging all enemies in a trail beneath you. Moonlight Butterfly lasts for 5 seconds and deals a devastating 1200 hit points per second to any enemies within a small hitbox. Wait until enemies come into close range, and surprise them with Moonlight Butterfly's immense damage. Switching over to the strengths and weaknesses. Turn A Gundam has two primary sets of strengths. The first of these is its power as a long to mid range sniper. Turn A Gundam has the second highest effective range in Gundam Evolution. While it doesn't quite have the one shot potential of GM Sniper 2, Turn A Gundam still holds quite an effective weapon. Its charge projectile is fast, pierces through enemies, and has a lingering hitbox. These combined make the shot very reliable for a projectile, which is particularly devastating given its high damage that doesn't fall off at range. The second of these sets of strengths is Turn A Gundam's beefiness. While it isn't meant for close range fighting, it excels at surviving being dove by enemies, which is when enemies jump onto you and force a close fight. Its stun ability, two dash mobilities, and uncancelable self heal give it sustain and options when dove. Whether choosing to stun the enemy or dash away, Turn A Gundam is much harder to kill than its sniper counterpart, GM Sniper 2. While Turn A Gundam is a powerful and flexible mobile suit, it still has weaknesses. Low damage output at close range is one of these. Turn A Gundam is good at stabilizing from close range threats, but it still will lose to them if it doesn't get support, or if it doesn't outplay the enemy drastically. It also lacks the capability to one shot full HP targets, so Turn A Gundam will lose to a GM Sniper 2 at long range. This may seem like a rather particular weakness, but GM Sniper 2 also plays best on long range maps, so this matchup is very likely to occur. Unlike Ashimar and GM Sniper 2, Turn A Gundam also lacks a vertical mobility cooldown. It can access high grounds with its ultimate, but it is infrequently available and therefore doesn't allow consistent access. So with the strengths and weaknesses covered, in what situations should you play Turn A Gundam? As a long to mid range sniper, Turn A Gundam is best on maps where it can stay within a range that is long enough to outrange other enemies, but not too far to become inconsistent. For Turn A Gundam to be most effective, it is very important that these also be wider maps, with opportunities to shoot from the side angles away from the core of your team, which are called off angles. Maps with high ground positions that can be easily accessed are also very helpful. Disregarding map specifics, the most ideal situation to play Turn A Gundam is as a substitute to GM Sniper 2. GM Sniper 2 wins as a pure sniper, but Turn A Gundam beats it in horizontal mobility, self sustain, and having a stun ability, therefore making it a safer and more consistent pick in most circumstances. So in situations where a GM Sniper 2 would be powerful, but you are too at risk of being dove by mobile suits such as Zaku 2, Sazabi, or Barbatos, play Turn A Gundam instead. Now to the main subject, how do you play Turn A Gundam? Here's the general method. Turn A Gundam's charge damage does not have fall off, so play far enough where you are outranging your enemies. Just don't play too far where shots are getting too hard to hit since it is still a projectile. Avoid rooms and closed areas as your damage and safety decreases drastically when forced into close range fights. You will usually lose to close range mobile suits, so to give yourself the best chance to win, save nano skid and overhead throw to defend yourself when aggressed onto. With these two cooldowns available, close range fights are winnable, and at minimum will usually end with you still alive. 
While your G maneuver has a very high damage potential, the ability is easily dodged and you are very vulnerable while using it. So watch for opportunities where enemies are unsuspecting and within close range to secure kills. With the overview finished, let's do specifics. During fights, enemies will often take cover from the main angle of your team, which is the angle that is directly in front of your team that most of your teammates are firing down. Since the cover they are using often doesn't block angles from the side, this opens up opportunities for Turn A Gundam to take off angles, which are alternate angles that are not directly in front of the enemy. Taking these off angles offers a number of advantages, such as that it reduces the number of enemies looking at you and then forces the enemy to split their attention between you or your team after they learn you are there. But most importantly, taking an off angle allows you to see the enemy and therefore exposes them to your damage, as the cover they are using to block front damage will often not cover them from 45 degree off angles. The closer to 90 degrees off the enemy you can take an angle, the more damage potential you have as the enemies will become more and more exposed. 9 out of 10 long range fights are decided based on which team controls more of these major off angles, so it is extremely important to take advantage of them. With that said, there are two important types of threats to think about while playing and also while looking to take off angles. The first of these are hypermobile characters capable of diving onto you, like Zaku 2, Barbatos, and Sazabi, which are frequently called dive mobile suits. And the second is another long range threat, but specifically a GM Sniper 2. Each of these types of enemies changes how you must play. Playing against dive characters forces you to position more safely towards your team, therefore not being able to take as aggressive of off angles. As a turn A Gundam, you can play a more aggressive angle than a GM Sniper 2, but keep in mind you are still vulnerable. If you still choose to play aggressively, do not let the enemy know you are there before you shoot. And once you shoot, quickly return to your team. If one of these dive mobile suits knows your location, you will be dove and pressured out, and often potentially killed. However, if the enemy does not have a dive mobile suit, then you are free to aggressively take 90 degree angles on the side of the enemy and destroy them. If the enemy has a GM Sniper 2, then you must always be aware or searching for the location of the enemy sniper, because if a GM Sniper 2 sees you before you see it, then you will often die. Turn A Gundam will lose 9 out of 10 1v1s against an equally skilled GM Sniper 2 at long range, so avoid taking 1v1 duels with them unless you can get into medium or close range. Whether you attempt to get close to the GM Sniper 2 for a better 1v1, or hide from it and attack its team instead, you must be aware of where it is. However, if the enemy team does not have any of these, then you are more or less free to stand in the open and oppress the enemy team. Reminder: Do not waste nanoscan and overhead throw, as they are your safety net against dive mobile suits. With these cooldowns available, you will likely survive being dove on, but without them, you are an easy kill. If you are forced to use these cooldowns early for whatever reason, play more conservatively. The best players understand their limits, and a turning Gundam without nanoscan and overhead throw is definitely limited. Go watch my GM Sniper 2 guide for more sniper know-how, so you can see what differentiates the two sniper characters and how you should play these powerful damage dealers. Thanks so much for watching the video everyone. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, it means so much to the channel. I have 6 more of these guys set to release for the remaining mobile suits, so keep tuned for more.